Hey guys, welcome to another video and today we're looking at the calculations for circular motion. Alright, so I hope you guys are ready to learn about calculating using circular motions equations that we lo looked at yesterday. Alright, so let's go. Question 1. So it says a, a toy cart at the end of a string 0 0.7 0 meters long moves in a circular circle on a table. The cart has a mass of 2 kilograms and a string and the string has a braking strength of 40 newtons. Calculate the maximum speed that the cart can attain without breaking the string. Right? So in this case, the string is actually on the the table, right? So it's been whirled around on the table creating a horizontal circle. Now the because the braking strength is 40 newtons, right? So the maximum velocity has to be attained when it is the force is 40, right? So in this case, F will be 40, and we know the equation for centripetal force because it's going in a circle is F equals mv squared over r. So we have F being 40, right? The mass is 2 kilograms, so 2. The V is unknown, so that's V squared over the radius right which is 0 0.70 right so we multiply across cross multiply so 40 times 0 0.70 which is 28 right and then we divide by 2 to get v squared equals 14 right so because we want v we find the square root of 14 which is 3.74 meters per second right so as you know we start with an easy question right and then we work our way to some more difficult ones Right, so question two, a minute hand on a large clock is 0 0.50 meters long. Part A, calculate its linear speed at its tip in meters per second, right? So remember yesterday we talked about linear speed and angular speed, right? So the linear speed is V and the angular speed is omega, which is that weird looking W, right? So we know that omega is theta over t, and theta means radian, right? So for a clock, right, the easy one that I used was a um, minute hand goes around, right, from 12 right back to 12, so it creates an angle of 360, right? So because it's radian, right, remember pi represents 180, so therefore 360 in radians is 2 pi. Right? So, the degree, so the theta there would be 2 pi, and the time that it takes to go around would be 60, because it's a minute, so you're changing 60 minutes to seconds, right? So it's 60 times 60, so you get 3,600 seconds, right? When we divide that, we get 0 0.00174 rads per second, which is radians per second, right? And then we know that linear volt velocity v is equal to the radius of the circle times omega right so the radius of this clock hand is 0 0.50 multiplied by omega which is 0 0.00174 and we get the linear speed to be 0 0.00087 meters per second right so that would be the linear speed of the hand of the clock right so let's go to part b What's the centri calculated centripetal acceleration of the tip of the clock, of the hand, sorry. So we know that centripetal acceleration is v squared over r, right? So we just found the linear velocity. So we substitute linear velocity, which is 0 0.00087 squared over r, which is 0 0.50. So we get the acceleration to be 1.51 times 10 to the negative 6 meters per second squared. Right. Let's go next question. So Ryan swings a pail of water in a vertical circle one meters in radius and at a constant speed. If the water is not to be not to spill on him, calculate the minimum tangential speed of the pail of water. All right. So you might be wondering, we only got one thing in this question, All right? But we did not, right? So. First of all, it says the minimal or the minimum tangential speed. So that means that we're finding the linear speed. Because remember, linear speed 
our linear velocity is the tangent towards the circle, right? So we're finding v, right? But we know something here because he's sort of in the, the water like this, right? So that means that the gravitational force, right, would be equal to your centripetal force, right? So at that point, that's the point in which there's no net force acting on the pail to cause the water to be spilled, right? So that's very important, right? So because the water is not being spilled, that means the force causing it to maintain a circular path is equal to the weight, the force of gravity, which is the weight of the pail, right? So we know force of gravity is the weight of the pail, which is mg, and we know centripetal force is mv squared over r. So, right? so remember, it's the same pail here with water, so the m's can cancel. So we leave back with g equals v squared over r. Right? And we know g is 9.8, v squared is unknown, and r, in this case, is 1 meter. Right? So we find v to the square root of 9.8, and we get v to be 3.13 meters per second. Right? So it doesn't look hard, right? <laughs> All right, so let's go. Part B. Calculate the minimum angular speed of the swing. So now that we have the linear speed, right, we can find omega, which is our angular speed, right? So we know omega is v over r. So the v is 3.13 and r is 1. So therefore, omega is the same 3.13 rights per second, right? All right, and our last question for today. So it says, a 245 gram mass is on the end of a 35 centimeter long string. Determine the tension in the string at the top of top if the mass is spinning at 5.67 meters per second in a vertical plane. All right, and remember this is our last topic that we did yesterday, right? So in the vertical plane, if you remember at the top, right, remember, Tension always goes down inside the circle, right? Weight always acts down as well. And then we have centripetal force, sorry, that always goes up. So to maintain a balance, right? So we have two forces going up, down. So our centripetal force will go up to ensure there is a balance so the object continuously goes in that circle, right? So from that, we know that Fc, which is our centripetal force, is equal to your tension plus your weight right? So we're asked to find tension so we can make T the subject, which is T is equal to Fc minus the weight, right? So we know that Fc is mv squared over r, right? And W, weight, is equal to mg, right? So we have the mass, which is 0 0.245 kilograms, right? Because we got it in grams, so we divide by a thousand to get in kilogram times it was moving at 5.67, so 5.67 squared, over the radius, which is 35 centimeters. We change it to meters, so we get 0 0.35, right? So that's our centripetal force minus our weight, which is the mass, 0 0.245 times G, which is 9.8, right? So our centripetal force is 22.50, and our weight is 2.40. When we minus, we get tension to be 20.10 newtons, right? So that's the tension from the string when it was actually at its top position, right? And just for note, remember when it comes to the bottom, right, the tension will increase, right? Because now tension is being acted against the centripetal force as well as the weight of the, the object, all right? So I hope you guys fully understand circular motion, right? And you should be able to work any question now pertaining to circular motion. All right, so thank you for watching and see you guys next time.